Now setting up this node graph in Houdini isn't just to process this geometry, it's to basically have a way to batch through multiple uh, objects here. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to go back through here and I'm, the first thing I'm going to do is go through here and unlock all of these nodes. I don't want any cache geometry in here because if I go up here and change any of these, like I'm going to plug in a completely new character in here, I don't want any cached information. So I'm going to hold down control and just unlock all of these. And I think I got one more node. Yeah, we'll go ahead and control click this one and unlock that one as well. So now that I got that all unlocked, I'm able to use this as just a way to process variants. So let's go ahead and save this. And let's put another asset through here. So if we go back into ZBrush, you can remember we do have a variant in here. Same basic breakup. It's got headgear, he's got clothing, a little differently proportioned. But let's go ahead and process him through and see how Houdini does. So let's go back into Houdini here. And let's put in another file node. You can use the original file node and just load in another file, but if you want to bring in them both, you can just grab one here. Let's go ahead and do farmer variant 01 high. Let's plug this one right into the top. And when you're going through and cooking these graphs, you're going to see this is where some beefy hardware comes into play. Uh, the AMD Ryzen 30 3970X. So I've got 32 cores. 64 threads able to churn away on some of this. Some of this processes don't scale spectacularly well, but even then, you know, the clock speed's up there. Uh, but you can see on some of these, like the voxelization, and I think some of the Q-Measure stuff works really, really well with that type of hardware. So if it scales well, you know, a lot of your cooking will happen a lot faster. But in this case, you know, go through and, yeah, here's the exporting, doing some of that quarter measure stuff really uh, does a lot of that stuff really well, and we're done. And actually, that didn't take too long. I'll put a counter for how long that kind of took to wrap up there. So just enough to go grab a cup of coffee, it looked like. And if you want to see the result of this, we can click down here and look at our static export. We have a little ghosted guy over here. Go to this little three object thing here and say, hide other objects. So now we can just check out the result. And again, we didn't change any settings. We basically just told it to do what we wanted to do. And the only thing I see here is the body uh, he had some asymmetrical hair, and that's easy enough to fix. So now one thing, and that's kind of like a good way to stress test your graphs, is is it going to work for everything? And one thing it's not going to work for is when we did this z remesher on the body here, we had symmetry axis turned on, and honestly, I think I even sculpted the legs differently uh, when we did the high res. So what would be even safer and make this graph even more usable is we just go ahead and turn off symmetry axis for the body. On the old man, it wasn't so noticeable. On this guy, we were able to catch that. There we go, and we'll head right back down here. So, there his hair is fixed. I think we're in good shape. So let's do another static fracture export, only this time we'll call it Farmer Variant Export. We'll keep it a piece attribute. Go ahead and hit Static Export. Let's go back up here to Object, and here we've got our Farmer Variant Export. So again, we'll go to File, Export, FBX. This time we'll drag the variant over here. And we'll go ahead and point him to, we'll go ahead and match that high that's sitting there. So we'll say farmer var001 low, hit export. Let's go back to Substance Painter. We'll go ahead and save this one out. Name it farmer. Let's go over here to file new. Grab our variant 01 low, hit OK. Let's go over here to bake mesh maps. 2048, load in our high, scroll down, say match by mesh name, ambient occlusion, mesh name, bake all texture sets. And there we go. This guy's all ready to be textured as well. Auto game res, ready for texturing. And we've got an automated pipeline here that we can reuse for any number of assets.